Hi guys, it's me, Clouds HD, and welcome to this review and qualifying of a farcical qualifying session at Monza. And before we get into talking about the drivers and teams and how they did, we've got to talk about what happened at the end of qualifying with all the backing up and holding up. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to do so. Um, I'm sure most of you guys who are watching know what I mean with what happened at the end of qualifying with all the holding and backing up. Now, there are a few things I need to blame and, you know, talk about. So first off, I want to blame Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren, Renault, and uh, Racing Point for sending their drivers out too late. If you're planning on doing a slow out lap, you can't go out two minutes to go for an 80 second lap. You can't. You've got to give yourself more time if you are planning on doing a slow out lap. If you're planning on doing a qualifying style out lap, then, you know, going out two minutes to go, that's fine. But if you're planning on being that slow on your out lap, then why are you even trying to do that? Send them out a minute before and you'll actually be able to get out on track, do your out lap as slow as you want and, you know, get a toe and do a lap, not, not do a lap. Also, I need to blame uh, really... In terms of the drivers, Carlos Sainz and Nico Hülkenberg, those two were the main culprits in terms of blocking um, at the very start of the outlaps at the very end. I think those two do deserve to get penalties. I know it's mostly a team tactic. It, you can't necessarily blame the tactic of getting a toe or slipstream for later on in the lap on them, but they still blocked other drivers from being able to get through the pack and start their lap. That is a fact. And I think anyone in that pack who was driving unnecessarily slowly has to get a penalty. I don't care if you're Charles Leclerc, even though he wasn't driving unnecessarily slowly. I think he'll be fine. He actually tried to do a lap. Um, but anyone who was driving unnecessarily slowly deserves a penalty. I don't care who they are, what position they're starting in. You cannot do that. You cannot ruin other people's laps because you so desperately want a toe or a slipstream. I know it's worth a lot at this circuit, but you've got to use your common sense and your brain. Because, yeah, having a slipstream is great, but if you get held up behind another car because you're too close, or you don't give yourself enough time to do a lap, then what's the point in trying to get a tail or a slipstream by slowing up and letting other people go through? There's no point. So, I think those, you know, drivers and teams that were enabling... You know, that to happen have got to take some blame. But also, I think the FIA need to create a new rule where you have to now set a lap time that is not quick, but not massively slow compared to, um, you know, compared to the current lap time at that circuit. I know they do have a rule about you have to set a, a lap within the, I think, safety car delta. That's fine, but I don't think the safety car delta is representative of you know how quick the cars i think need to go to avoid this happening in the future for example it's a one minute 20 lap at monza for me they need to be doing a one minute 40 out lap i don't see what the problem with that is not a one minute 50 or two minute out lap that's ridiculous they should not be doing that so they've got to solve this because this will happen again it'll happen again at say suzuka where Especially at the end of the lap, it, you know, having a slipstream will help. Or Brazil, especially, where power is very important in the first and third sector. They've got to avoid this happening. What happened today was a disgrace and it completely ruined the qualifying session. Hopefully, they can stop this from happening again. Because it also happened in F3. And we can't have this happen. It Because it's a farce. It's a farce. We're, you know, we want to be entertained. That's not entertainment. That's ruining the end of qualifying, which was going to be great. So, yeah, they've got to solve that issue. But anyway, let's get into qualifying and what happens. So here are the results. Charles Leclerc for Ferrari gets pole position from Lewis Hamilton second, then Bottas in third, uh, Vettel fourth, and then Ricardo fifth, Hulkenberg sixth, Sainz in seventh, Albon eighth, Raikkonen ninth, and Stroll in tenth, and then... Knocked out in Q2, Giovinazzi, Magnussen, Kvyat, Norris, Gasly, and knocked out in qualifying one. Grosjean, Perez, Russell, Kubica, and Verstappen, of course. Verstappen didn't do a lap time because he will start at the back 
uh, with also Gasly and Norris. But first, let's go to Mercedes. Despite all the stuff that happened at the end of the session, I think this team can be very, very happy uh, with their day today. They can be very happy because they were not expecting to be within a tenth of a second of pole position here. They were not expecting that. After Spa, where Ferrari in qualifying was so dominant, they thought they would be probably half a second off. But this weekend, that Mercedes car has really, really been a very good car. And I think they are absolutely, because they have a car in second and third, they are the favourites for the race win tomorrow. No doubt about it, because come rain or shine, they have a faster car in race trim. So I think they will be very happy with that. Of course, if they got pole, that'd be even better. But still, P2 and P3 is not bad at all. And, you know, drivers from P2 on the grid have got into the lead at the first corner before. So there's no reason why Lewis Hamilton can't do so again. Also, uh, Valtteri Bottas, I just want to say another good performance. Yes, he didn't outqualify Lewis Hamilton, but it is Lewis Hamilton at the end of the day. And he was only eight thousandths off his teammate. So another good performance there in qualifying by Valtteri Bottas. And a good day for Mercedes. Next up, Ferrari. In terms of getting pole, it was a good day for Ferrari. But I wouldn't say a great day because Sebastian Vettel is in P4. Now, he can't be to blame entirely. And for a couple reasons. One, he was held up in that, you know, weird ending to qualifying three. And also, he did not have a toe in his first qualifying run in Q3. So that did affect his performance. But I think he's got to be closer, though, to, to Charles Leclerc a bit. I know he's only a tenth and a half off. But I just, the Ferrari is just so disappointing, you know, to have him in P4. Because... He will not be able to race Bottas and Hamilton because he won't have the car to do so. He'll have the power at the start to do so, but if he doesn't get past at the start, then he's not going to get a podium unless there is contact ahead, crashes, spins, or rain, or whatever. So, for Ferrari, going into tomorrow's race, it's not looking good, in my opinion. I think they're under real threat, and I think right now... If I was to bet who was to win, it would not be Ferrari or Charles Leclerc because they are going to be definitely, say if it is drive for the race, after lap 10, they are going to be under so much pressure from Hamilton and Bottas in those Mercedes cars. So Ferrari, if they do win, they're going to need a lot to go right for them. They really, really are. Next up is Red Bull. Um... Very weird session. Very weird session. So Max Verstappen came out at the end of Q1. I thought initially during the watch along that he was not going to bother doing a lap. But instead, he had a power issue. That's why he did not do a lap at the end. Uh, Alex Albon qualifies in P8 but doesn't set a time in Q3 because he did not do a, a time in the first run of Q3 because uh, Kimi Raikkonen caused a red flag before he could you know, complete his lap. And then the whole thing at the end, Albon didn't get across the line in time. So Albon will start the Grand Prix from, well, for now, 8th place. But if Hulkenberg and Sainz get penalties, then that's 6th place. But even though his grid position is poor, I don't think we can necessarily blame Albon here. Because, again, there were circumstances as to why he could not do a proper time in... The final session. So I don't think we should really blame Albon for that. But for tomorrow for Red Bull. I think Albon is really going to be fighting away hard with the Renaults. If they don't get a penalty. And then Verstappen of course will come through the field. But hopefully for Red Bull. Rain is about. Because if it is. Then Red Bull are right there for a podium. Now let's get into the midfield. First off Renault. Great day for Renault pace wise. Third row lockout, that is very, very good for them. And if you told them they'd have this after Hungary, they would not have believed you because the Renault was not looking good at all. Uh, but with the lower downforce package that they bring to lower downforce circuits, they seem to actually be pretty good. Downforce seems to be their weakness at the moment. 
Um, so good day, P5 and P6. Holkenberg again, I think he should get a penalty because what he did at the end of the session there was not smart at all. And I think he definitely blocked, you know, drivers out there. Uh, but yeah, great day for Renault. Hopefully, they actually get the result that they need. They have got to outscore Toro Rosso tomorrow without a doubt. I don't care what excuse it is. They've got to do it. They've got to out, uh, not out qualify, out race and get more points than Toro Rosso. They've got to do it because if they don't start now with the tracks coming up, they will not finish out of Toro Rosso and the constructors. They've got to beat them tomorrow. Next up, McLaren. Carlos Sainz, even though he was another culprit for that uh, mess at the end, in terms of his own qualifying, he did very well. Qualifying P7 is not a position I think he expected to be in. I don't think Carlos, honestly, expected to be in the top 10 because the McLaren has not been a top 10 car this weekend. But Carlos got great help from his teammate Lando Norris getting a tow at the end of qualifying two. And that allowed Carlos to get into the top 10. So great for him and great for the team. Uh, but if Carlos does get a penalty, then that won't really be you know meaning much. Uh, but McLaren do have a better looking car after qualifying uh, than it looked you know going into qualifying after practice so i think mclaren are definitely in there for points we'll see though of course what happens with any penalties or stuff like that of course though norris is starting from the back because he does have new uh, components to his power unit that he is now taking on uh, next up is alpha <sighs> could have been better today for alpha in terms of the weekend this was a better session than the, you know that the weekend's been so far Kimi Raikkonen crashed out and ended up p9 ahead of Stroll because Stroll never set a time the Raikkonen if he doesn't have to take a penalty a gearbox penalty or anything like that he will start from p9 and Antonio Giovinazzi very unlucky not to get into the top 10 two thousandths of a second away from knocking his teammate out so unlucky for him but that's the way it is. But I think actually considering the tyres going into the race, I think Antonio will probably be better off starting P11. Hopefully he can actually manage his tyres. But Alpha, despite having a messy-ish qualifying, I think they are in for a definitely a points finish. They've just got to make sure that they don't get involved in any trouble. And if they don't, then I think they'll get it. Next up is Haas. P12 and P16, I think that's the best they could have hoped for today, Haas. Um, and for the race, we know what's going to happen. Haas are going to drop back because they don't have any race pace. So I'm afraid for Haas, it's another useless weekend. Next up, Toro Rosso. I'm a bit disappointed for Daniel Kvyat because he was looking great for a top 10 um, until the final run of Q2 and then ended up in 13th place. Bit bit of a shame. Pierre Gasly, I think if he didn't have a penalty, he would be up there. But um, yeah, Toro Rosso, I think, will be slightly disappointed with their qualifying performance. But we know from Spa, especially, that on race day, they have one of the fastest cars in the midfield. So do not, even if it rains, in the rain normally they're great. Do not count out Toro Rosso for a good finish tomorrow because they will be in there. You can guarantee it. Even Gasly, because Gasly does have a very strong pace compared to other midfield cars, such as, you know, the Haases, Alphas, Racing Points. So I think Toro Rosso are definitely looking good race pace wise. Grid position, not too great, but they'll be in there for sure. And the last midfield team, of course, is Racing Point. Lance Stroll got into Q3. Well done, Lance. And if he doesn't get a penalty for any holding up at the end of the session, then Lance, I think, is guaranteed a points finish because he always gets a great start and he rarely has a first lap accident that often. So I think Lance is in for a good points finish tomorrow, especially in that Racing Point car, which is so quick in a straight line. And is definitely good around this circuit. So great for Lance. Big shame for Sergio Perez though. I think he would have been absolutely up in 6th or 7th place today. But he had a reliability issue and is 17th. And he will be starting from the back of course. Because he'll have to take on uh, a new component. A completely new power unit most likely. So shame for him. But as we've seen in the past with Sergio Perez at Monza. 
he can come through to still finish the points. I think last year in 2018, Perez qualified, was it 16th or 17th? Same position, basically. And finished in, I think, P7 or P6, something like that. So don't count out Perez or Stroll for a good result tomorrow. And of course, Williams are at the very back. But guys, that is it for the qualifying review. What a disgraceful qualifying, but hopefully with a great race tomorrow, whether it is raining or dry, we can put that out of our memory and have a great race day tomorrow.